So as you may notice, there's a lot of stuff going on with the legato. There's actually three layers of dynamic legato in the library. Uh, let me just try to improv here over the same groove we just heard. And you'll notice here, I'm sort of sometimes playing a little bit harder on the keys. That's to trigger that sort of almost vulgar kind of legato, this one. You know, when you're really pushing it. But there's actually two different legato layers underneath. Let me try to play really soft to trigger the softer layers. And then afterwards, trigger a little bit harder and then get into that sort of very 80s Kenny G kind of sounding layer. And it's super smooth and buttery that way. It really is smooth jazz on your fingertips. And when you do the harder note, get that sort of almost like whiny kind of sound, but really where the player is like pushing, scooping the note upwards. So in this next mini demo here, I'm combining two instances of sound paint using our H marimba ensemble and our H glockenspiel ensemble together with the soprano sax. I don't know why, they just sort of work together. Sort of a strange duet or trio of different kind of instruments that just textually work together. One thing I noticed here in this sequence here it was that it was a little bit artificial sometimes, and that's because I forgot to breathe. And when I play these instruments normally, um, especially when I sequence them more detailed, I really think about like, okay, how long can the player actually keep his breath between the different phrases? I think the computer sometimes makes us just want to play and play and play. But in reality, you know, there's only so much air in a human being. So more like this. Let me just try to improv over this one again here. But with that in mind.
And it's almost like I'm actually sort of finding myself breathing with the instrument as I'm doing it. You'll see a lot of players, particularly violinists, when you often hear them, they sort of breathe with the instrument. It's a good idea to do in the computer as well. You just get more connected to the DAW. So there are certain instruments that just goes together. In this case here, I really just jive with the 1975 electric guitar and sound paint here and just combining it with the soprano sax. I'm just gonna record a quick phrase here and then show you how quickly you can just improv over that and how sort of well the two belong together. It's like a sonic marriage. something like that and um, just try to improv over it and see how that works. No idea. It can be many different things. I can try to do a new improv over it. Maybe that'll work better. So that was the Rhodes inside of Sound Paint. Really a sweet, like if you like that vintage sort of growly, gritty kind of Rhodes. And really sort of pronounced fingers on it. Or keys. Really just have the sort of sticky quality. That's sort of the... It's almost like you got like glue in your fingers. You're like, you know, that kind of, kind of feeling. But it's super sweet, very playable, and goes well together with the soprano sax too. And of course, if you have a soprano saxophone, you're obliged to take some pizzicatos from a library. I'm using Anthology in this case here, really full, lush kind of pizzicatos, and then just uh, play a little bit of Englishman in New York.
And obviously the legato is the sort of crown jewel of the library. There's actually two different types of legato in the library. We both have a run-based legato and then we have a traditional legato, which is the one I've been demonstrating here. The traditional one is really fast as well, so I don't use the run builder because I feel the first one is adequate. But the library actually has a variety of other articulations. If you're familiar with our other studio series, you'll know that we have this vast amount of articulations, for example, in our sax trio, our intimate strings, or intimate brass. And that's followed here in the studio soprano saxophone as well, recorded in the same studio as all the other ones, same sort of philosophy, and really deep. I just have a variety of sequences here. I'm just going to trigger them. If you want to make it to the end of the video here, just going through some of the individual articulations. Imagine what you can do when you have them all together. There are dozens and dozens of other articulations, arcs, and many different kind of short notes and performance and effects-based notes, and you can really combine them in. And if what you heard wasn't realistic enough, then just imagine what you can do by combining all these articulations together. The idea here is really to offer you a super comprehensive tool for very realistic writing. There's actually the round robin on a variety of the effects and performances you're gonna see here or performance-based articulations. So you get natural variants when you repeat them and so forth. So yeah, this is the Studio Soprano Saxophone, a labor I love. I can hear the player in there. I feel like the player when I'm playing on the keys and it's just smooth jazz all over my fingertips. You know, those are the kind of things that are impossible to do with staccato samples, so you have all of them in there with round robin as well. So not only are they round robin based, but they're also velocity based. We also have measured articulations. Think of them a little bit like ostinato for strings. Well, these are ostinatos for brass, actually. Lastly, a variety of performance-based effects that means more bends and scoops. We also got run building here. You can run up and down on your pitch bender and you can run in fifths or in octaves as well. Again, just some of those things that are hard to do with traditional multi-samples and legato samples.
And that's the Studio Soprano saxophone in all its buttery glory. Let me just wrap it up here with an improv and hope you dig it. Bravo! <laughs> Thank you. Quite a performance. <laughs>